remind us that um, I believe there was a group yesterday that went to hike the Amanda Trail. And that is a reminder that we stand on the land of the first people of Florence, the Sayusla Indians, for which that Amanda Trail is really designated for. So let us remember to honor that tribe, past, present, and future members, with great thanks. We're going to open today with Spirit of Life. We sing this song every time. And it's hymn number 123 in the book, or the words are in the program. However you feel comfortable, uh, if you can rise, and let's sing Spirit of Life, if you so choose. opportunity to gather together, talk about his message or any part of the program to deepen your learning and to gather in a smaller community. And also Catherine will be offering affirmative prayer in our side room over here, nice and confidential. We've got a screen up, so if you'd like to talk privately with Catherine, she'll be available as well. Thank you. We always appreciate that. And in the program, you'll find on the right side the list of upcoming events and services. We also have birthdays coming up. So we're trying to list those in the program as best we can. So you'll know whose birthdays are coming up. So uh, if your birthday is in January or into February and you're not listed there, let me know and we'll get you on the program. Okay? Also, I know it's tough, but we are asking everybody who's here to remain fully masked at all times unless you're standing behind the podium. So we request KN95 or something just as good, I guess. There are some hospital masks that are good. Um, we have a few in the back that I've donated, but you know you might have to get your own supply going forward in this future of this so pandemic. They're all gone, Sally. What's that? The KN95s are all gone. They're all gone back there? Look at the wonderful people who are all wearing them. I know. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, so our chalice lighting, Deborah, would you light the chalice? Or do you want to read it? I mean, I'm sorry, Catherine. I do that all the time. I do that all the time. I will light it. You will light it. Do you know how to use this one? No. Just see how that just goes right over the little flame. Okay. So the lighting of the chalice, these words are from Louis Van Leer, titled, On the Brink of a New Year. We light this chalice on the brink of this new year. 
letting go of what has been, open and hopeful for what may come. Renewed, restored, ready to live life fully anew. May we move forward with intention. And now I invite Catherine to come up. She has some joys and concerns, an opportunity for you all to come forward and speak about that. I'm going to step off to the side. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. This is the part of the service where we share our joys and concerns. Sally is, is here. If you have anything to share, she'll hand you the microphone. Yes, ma'am. And she will also, or you can also, drop a shell into the cleansing water. These joys and concerns allow us to connect to comfort and support with each other, to share unexpected joys and intentions fulfilled. Does anyone have anything today? Please come up. Make a line around here. To, mm -hmm, please. We have a very full program today, so we hope your joys and concerns can be shared quickly. Okay. Well, we, we skipped announcements, so this is... So here, I'm going to give you the microphone again. All right, yeah. Uh, it's more of an announcement, but it's also a joy and a concern. And yeah, I'm going to talk through my mask, not to be confused with talking through my hat. <laughs> um, Happy New Year, everybody. And mark your calendars, because in exactly three weeks, uh, the 23rd of this month, uh, we have a panel discussion on climate change, called Climate Change, What Can We Do? It's going to be at St. Andrews, uh, which that's the Episcopal, yes. and uh, it's over at uh, over on Nineteenth and Spruce. And uh, I'll say a little bit about who we have coming. Uh, Mark Nystrom, who's the Lane County climate strategist, will be speaking and presenting uh, some material. Grace Brailer, who's from Beyond Toxics. Mike Allen from Florence Emergency Climate Campaign, and uh, Cody Klein Smith. Uh, for, who's a climate resilience analyst. Also, I'm working on getting a film from the Saisla tribe uh, called Wisdom of the Elders. And if you haven't seen that, it's it's excellent uh, presentation from a native point of view on, on the climate issue. So, uh, hope to see everybody there. And uh, uh, spread the word. I'll leave some flyers on the table there. Thank you, Mark. And we'll get that into the newsletter, right, Mark? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. My name's Ashley. I wanted to shout out, and y'all sent some positive thoughts. Ms. Rama is in the hospital again, and I'm not sure when she's going to be coming back. She's over in River Bend. But just send out some good energy and juju. Thanks. Do you want to drop a Thank you, Ashley. Thank really you. Really appreciate that. Good morning, everybody. I hope you're all right good health. Right up to your mouth so we can hear you. Oh. Yeah. Mike. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I, I, I put out gratitude last week for the people that have been in support of this mess. But um, I did not thank some really important people that showed up, volunteered to drive me back and forth to Eugene, which I know is a royal pain in the butt, and you did it anyway. God bless, God bless, God bless. You know who you are. Thanks. Thank you, Judy. Um, can ahead. I share something about, I think, Marcia? Absolutely. Marcia, I talked to Marcia the other day, and she is putting her home uh, in Green Trees for sale and has a place at Spruce Point. Mm -hmm. So she'll be, did you know that? Yes, I do. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. You're so smart. <laughs> um, so the joy is that she's going to be in a safe place, a place that can offer her guidance and help. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyway, this is for Marcia. And Marcia um, gave us some books that we will use. So I'm going through them now. I took all of them, and I'm just going through them. And some that are really great, Science of Mind, metaphysical books that we'll add to our library. So Excellent. thank you. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? It doesn't look like it. So the last shell is for all those we don't know about. All those, you know, those who are too shy, those who are just too much in pain to talk about it, 
just those that aren't really ready to come out yet, you know? So you are totally contained and embraced in our loving circle. I'm going to end with a, it's a simple quote, but I really liked it this morning by Reverend Christine Green. She's a uh, science mind minister. We don't need to know how things will change. We just need to be willing. Be willing to be held accountable for our own healing. Be willing to have the difficult conversations. Be willing to know there is a power and a presence for good working in our life and in, the, and, and in all humanity. Be willing to envision a world that works for everyone. And so it is. Yeah, a theme that the Unitarian Universalist Association has selected um, is, for this month, the power of intention. Mm -hmm. So you'll be hearing about intentions a lot in the upcoming Sundays, um, right here, um, on, on intentions. So that's exciting. So we also have an intention uh -huh. of never stopping, always going forward. Yes. It's my pleasure to introduce Karen Hernandez, who is our membership chairman. And we have the privilege of introducing not one, not two, but three individuals who wish to join our fellowship. So I'm going to start this off, and Karen and I are going to tag team. Yeah. Do we want to bring them forward now or later? Yeah, later. Later? Later. Okay. So sit tight wherever you are. <laughs> and you know who you are. They do. <laughs> they, they all know who they are. They all know who they are. Okay. There are some among us who have indicated their desire to join us on our journey. We charge them to actively share with us their creative thoughts, their vital experiences in life, their questions, their doubts, and their discoveries. We charge them to shake us up with their honest thinking, to stir us with their conscience, and to stimulate our hopes with their dreams about what together we, in community, can be. With these folks, we will continue to enhance our religious home, to ensure a warm and loving community, a safe place to grow and explore our spirituality, and to help to maintain a firm footing in a strong, liberal, religious heritage. To ensure and maintain these valued benefits, we ask these folks to uphold their responsibilities as called out in our bylaws. Quote, to support the mission of FOOF, that's the Florence Unitarian Universalist Fellowship for those who don't know. Make a recorded contribution in the form of time, talent, and treasure, and agree to be bound by FOOF bylaws and sign the membership book. <laughs> Finally, we ask each to commit to the covenant of behavior we've established for this congregation. It is my pleasure to introduce you to, and as I call your name, please come forward, Ashley Page. Ashley Page. Diana Gibson. Diana Gibson. Oh. Adeline Hughes. Adeline Hughes. Come on over here. Come on over here. Come on over here. This is Ashley. Hey. Diana's next. Diana's next. Adeline. Okay, so first I'm going to talk a little bit about Ashley. <laughs> Fitting. Well, you know, you know, Ashley and Diana have been around for a little while, and, and you know, Ashley has made her presence known. <laughs> she, she's not a quiet human being. But, um, so, what I'm going to say about her is she was born and raised in Georgia. Take a look at the sweatshirt. She's a big Bulldog fan. As an adult, Ashley has lived in many different places in the country. Ashley and Diana met online in 2015 and married in 2016 in New Mexico. They knew they were soulmates. As many of you have already discovered, she never met a stranger. <laughs> She's a stay-at-home wife who volunteers frequently at Food Share, and Food Share benefits greatly from what she's doing. She's very funny. She reads a lot. Anything else you want to know? Just ask her. She'll tell you. <laughs> 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 and in the middle we have Diana Gibson. 
Diana's from Tennessee, but spent much of her childhood in East Africa where her parents were missionaries. She too has lived all over the country and is a, and Diana naturally came to Florence because she is a nurse anesthetist for Peace Harbor. Yay. And they came here for that job that Diana has. Um, she loves to cook and garden, and the flowers outside our front door are being tended by Diana and Ashley. So thank you for that. And last but certainly not least is Lynn. Lynn Hughes is a retired family nurse practitioner. We are surrounded guys with health people. <laughs> we are all good. She and husband Martin, whom you met earlier, uh, moved to Florence from McMinnville, up outside of, close to Portland, for those of you who don't know. Um, they have two daughters, Alice, Alicia and Allison, and they now have four grandkids. Lynn enjoys hiking, camping, Nordic skiing, snowshoeing, writing poetry and essays, and reading. She's obviously an outdoors lady. <laughs> she also volunteers at the Senior Center. In McMinnville, she was a founder of the UU Fellowship there. So I'm going to tap her for some maybe help on our membership committee, and I think she has assist, said she will. And she likes small group ministry, so we will put her to work. Members and friends of this fellowship, do you agree to welcome these new members warmly and to accompany them on their spiritual journey? Please say yes. 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 Please say yes. If, if, if you don't, if you say no, please no. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, Diana, and Lynn, <clears throat> do you wish to continue? Yes. I mean, you can always run out the door now. <laughs> if not, we've got you. <clears throat> please say yes, and we will have you sign your name, receive a special name tag and member pin, and of course a copy of our bylaw. So we're going to put everything down for a minute, and we're going to take care of the little bit of paperwork we have here. Okay. Ashley, will go first. Ashley, Diana, and then Lynn. Okay. Yeah. So, here you go. It's exciting, huh? Mm -hmm. We haven't had any new members for last year. Last summer. Year. Last, yeah. summer. Yeah. last summer we did a new member. Yeah. yeah. Like, then we did it outside. Yeah, yeah, we did it outside. Yeah. Oh.
Do you want your life to truly take off? Then change your idea about it, about you. Think, speak, and act as the God you are. Uh, we're going to sing hymn number 121. It's called We'll Build a Land. It's in your hymnal. Jeff will be our accompanying guru over there. For those of you who don't know Jeff Lovejoy, yay! He sings and performs around Florence, and we're lucky to have him here this Sunday. So rise as you are able. We are going to sing We'll Build a Land, number 121. All four verses. Two. Two verses. First two verses. Anyhow, there were several words that really caught my attention 
around a, an attempt to define or help us understand intention. So here we go. Plan, aim, objective, design, purpose, goal, resolve, determination. And it just got me that there's, they all seem to have a little bit of a different understanding or meaning, but it made me think even more then about the idea of uh, intention and living with intention. And when I spoke last month about opening to joy, I raised the question, why do you want to live or what do you want to live for? And so today, in, in a similar way, I want to ask you to think about the theme of living with intention. But do you truly believe life serves a purpose? I think this is one of the most important questions we can really ask. And then partly with the sense of humor I mentioned in my brief intro for the bulletin, is, you know, if it does, if life really does serve a purpose, and that's for you to decide, then it becomes a bit of a challenge. That is, so what is that purpose? And having asked this question many times, often related to, and I appreciate so many more healthcare providers <laughs> showing up, is when I worked with cancer patients and families, is it wouldn't be unusual for me to get into a conversation about what do you think happens when you die. And the point here is that if you think life serves a purpose, it may be time to really start to think about this a little because you may be running out of time. <laughs> and I can even remember speaking to one fellow who was 90 years old and having this conversation and he really didn't know personally what he thought happened when you died and if life really served a purpose. So it made me think even more about um, we have so much time and if you think life serves a purpose then maybe you really want to think about that and align your life with what you think that purpose is. So we'll consider that more today and certainly in the discussion group if you choose to join me. Now, if you think life doesn't serve a purpose, this actually is easier. Because, as I suggested, if you think that it's just one time around on the merry-go-round and then lights out and that's it, the logic for me is then make the best of it. You know, if you've only gotten so much time, then play ball. <laughs> but either way, it just seems to make such great sense to me, is that you make the best of life, even if you do or do not think life serves a purpose. Either way, I think it's a really good idea. However, I want to propose that there is always still a strong rationale for being or living a virtuous life. When I say virtuous, things like being loving, and kind and compassionate because you reap what you sow. That I can tell you without reservation whether or not you believe life serves a purpose. You will reap what you sow. And this isn't some religious or spiritual maxim. This is scientific fact. You truly do create your reality and every thought, feeling, emotion, and action and intention you have literally does factor into creating your life circumstances. So as Sally said in the reading this morning, all things are created by you. All you see in your world is the outcome of your idea about it. So how do you see the world? What is your intention for it and for you? So I thought it would be especially appropriate as a way to begin to help think about a purpose of life and what you might intend is to remind you the Unifer Unitarian Universalist congregations affirm and promote seven principles which we hold as strong values and moral guides. We live out these principles with a living tradition of wisdom and spirituality drawn from sources as diverse as science, poetry, scripture, and personal experience. So, here are these principles as you may want to think about the living a life with intention and purpose. First principle, the inherent worth and dignity 
of every person. Two, justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. Three, acceptance of one another and encouragement to spiritual growth in our congregations. Four, a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Five, the right of conscience and the use of the democratic process within our congregations and in society at large. Six, the goal of world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. And seven, respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. When I think more scientifically, because of my background and strong interest in the power of the mind, uh, I was I thought to include uh, at least a consideration of Lynn McTaggart's work, and I look immediately at Deborah Marie and the Power of Eight group that I know some of you are part of, and I, I really encourage and uh, recommend and applaud your interest in looking much more closely, seriously about the power of intention and how we can apply it in our personal lives. You know, so I made a couple notes when I then started to review some of Lynn McTaggart's writings, who truly is a, uh, she's really studied and researched in our intention considerably, and a very worthy, then I think, representative for me today to tell you about the real science and power of intention. Anyhow, just a couple of thoughts from her. Thought is a thing that affects other things. Thought and intention are a tangible energy. Pay attention to your thoughts and intentions. They truly create your life circumstances. So thank you, Lynn, for all of your wonderful work that way, and Deborah for you leading this group. Then I was thinking about this time of year, you know, Thanksgiving not that long ago, and on Christmas and the New Year, and the special holidays, and then thinking about things we, we are probably, or again, food for thought, might choose to truly reflect on and be grateful for. So here are a couple notes I make personally. A time to be grateful for all our bounty, family, and friends. A time to celebrate the birth of a great teacher who came to remind us of the power we have to create a life of greater harmony. And a time to look forward and create resolutions for what we want in the new year. Last week when Catherine and her husband spoke, they talked about what keeps you from actually then having more of what you really want in your life. And in the meditation class we held last month, we also considered the idea of what holds you back, what keeps you from living a life of joy. But what I want to focus on today is what do you want and what do you intend? And you know how my intuition works and so the songs come in and as I was doing this, I got the song or the line from the song. When you give love, you hold out your hand and you get love. And then following that rather quickly, and it's one of my very, very favorite songs, even though it is a holiday song, I just love the lyrics and the words from my grown-up Christmas list. And it, I actually then took time to even go online and look up and didn't realize that because my version was always Michael Bublé. I don't know if you know that particular. I love that his version of it. But I found out that actually early on it was uh, Natalie Cole who sang, and I, many of you may know that song because of her version, and then even early on, I think going back almost 20 years, Kelly Clarkson, as part of their Christmas program, sang my grown up Christmas list. So here are the words, the lyrics by Linda Thompson. No more lives torn apart. I'm feeling this. That wars would never start. And time would heal all hearts. Everyone would have a friend. 
and right would always win, and love would never end. Thank you, Linda Thompson. So now I want to um, get to introduce now my uh, guided meditation, but. Just one last thing, I, I pay attention to things come up when I'm sitting down to try to organize this, and especially things I read about during that week, so just one last quote. The purpose of our lives is to be happy, or so says the Dalai Lama. So now, if you will, please make yourself comfortable, and then close your eyes. I'd like to lead you in a guided meditation, and then... When I finish, Jeff will start to play music, or I really then want you to take time on your own to consider the idea of life serving a purpose, and what do you intend? Thank you. This is from Conversations with God, Book 1 also. There is only one purpose for all of life, and that is for you and all that lives to experience fullest glory. Everything else you say, think, or do is attendant to that function. There is nothing else for your soul to do and nothing else your soul wants to do. The wonder of this purpose is that it is never ending. An ending is a limitation and God's purpose is without such a boundary. Should there come a moment in which you experience yourself in your fullest glory, you will, in that instant, imagine an even greater glory to fulfill. The more you are, the more you can become, and the more you can become, the more you yet can be. The deepest secret in life is not a process of discovery, but a process of creation. And to follow that with a channeled message from Abraham and Esther Hicks, we want you to understand that you are a powerful creator, and you have the ability to be or do or have anything you desire. But you have got to begin by creating a vibrational atmosphere or vibrational climate or vibrational nucleus. Make yourself the vibrational starting point. When you start in a gentle place of non-resistance, Jesus called it meek, the meek shall inherit the earth. When you are in this place of soft, non-resistant vibrational well-being, everything that you desire will come into your experience. What do you choose to create? What is your intention for the new year? Take your time.
Yes. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you very much for the beautiful, beautiful music. We have become accustomed over the years to practice an offering that not only gives back to our community partners, but also gives back to ourselves. Our community partner that we have selected for January and February is Saisla Outreach Services. I don't have a whole lot to say about it today, and I didn't ask Tuvia to present anything for today, but we'll get to it next week if we need to, and we will. <laughs> but Saisla Outreach Services, aka SOS, is an organization in town, it used to be called the Women's Shelter. They realized it was more than just women. This is families, this is men, women, children who are in need of services, whether it's financial aid, whether it's a sleeping bag, whether it's a, a, a chip to go to the laundry, whatever the case may be, Sayusla Outreach Services is there to provide a safety net for many of our less fortunate people in Florence. So we ask that you consider a contribution to SOS today as well this particular fellowship, because we are self-governed by a democratic process, <laughs> one of the privileges of our free church is a tradition to provide all of the financial support, support for the many services we have, the ministries from among ourselves. Generosity towards SOS and FOOF is one of the spiritual values we recognize as central to our personal and our institutional well-being. You are now invited to participate in the blessing of giving, as I ask, maybe George will on this side, and Catherine, will you on this side, help us pass our basket to accept the gifts of the congregation. Now, pay attention. We have two baskets. One slide says Florence Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. The other says SOS. Got it? <laughs> Jeff's going to play some lovely music as we pass this around, but before we begin, I ask that you repeat after me, Divine love through me, Divine love through me. Blesses, and multiplies all that I am. blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, all that I give. and all that I, receive. And all that I receive. I am prosperous now. I am prosperous now. Blessed be. Blessed be. Catherine, will you start with us? Thank you. of giving, your contributions are received in grateful appreciation. I invite Catherine to come back up to extinguish our flame as you enjoy these closing words. We extinguish this flame with a reminder from Lao Tzu that, quote, at the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are, and you know what to do. And just as Nike reminds us, <laughs> Just do it. Okay, we've come to the conclusion of our first Sunday service in January. Give yourself a round of applause. Before we conclude, I want to remind you that Dean will be available back in our library if you'd like to sit around the table and talk about the message. Um, and I invite Diana, Ashley, and Lynn. I'd like to take outside in front of our sign out there so you can take off your mask. I'll get a picture for later. So at this point, uh, and Catherine, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. if you would uh, rise, circle around the chairs, and let's sing our peace song. The words are on the back. We don't have the uh, music anywhere, so you have to just kind of follow along. And we're going to sing the peace song. 